Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. What if I told you that there are no such things as black crayons and black markers? That ever since you were a little kid, those crayon and marker boxes have been lying to you. It's all been a huge conspiracy. That actually, black ink is really just a deep, deep concentration of one or more other colors. At the end of some of our Indie Lab videos, we've been asking for requests of what kind of topic would you like to see in Indie Labs explore. Ali Fike and Wolfgang S. both opted for chromatography. And chromatography is exactly the tool that we need to analyze this situation and get to the bottom of this lie. I think you're old enough for the truth. Anthony Copter asks, in fact, what is chromatography? Well, chromatography is a general science term that applies to any technique that involves separating mixtures into their component parts. But as the name implies, it was originally used to separate out mixtures that had parts that had different colors that we'd be able to see. And that's usually what we mean today when we still use the term. Well, today we're going to use some chromatography to get to the bottom of this. And also, there's a fun project at the end that I think you'll really enjoy. Get some creativity going. So what do you need for all this? For our materials today, you're going to need some coffee filters. To be honest, laboratory filter paper would be best for this, but in the effort to keep things at home and low cost, coffee filter paper works great. You'll want a variety of different markers that you can experiment with. And you don't have to stick with markers, but that's what we're going to do for this lab. You can use any other type of colored ink. You'll need some type of cup or jar to actually do the experiment in, and then you don't have to be able to see through it, but it definitely makes it more interesting and fun. You'll need some type of stick to hang your experiment from, and I'm using your traditional popsicle stick. Uh, these things can be bought at craft stores these days. You'll need some tape and scissors, probably going to want a pencil. That way you can label your paper without it smearing due to the water being absorbed. And if you want the fun part at the end, you're going to want some colorful pipe cleaners as well. So how does chromatography work? What's the idea here? Well, it's all about the different densities of molecules. Check this out. This batch of candies represents a really small portion of our ink down at the molecular level. Each candy is an individual molecule. We can see at this level that the color is actually a mixture of four different colors. Each of these different color molecules, well, they also have their own densities, too. The green ones would have the lightest density. Uh, we'll treat pink as second, red as third, and the purple ones have the heaviest density. Now let's add some water. Assuming that the ink is water-soluble, once the water is added, going to dissolve the ink. As the ink gets dissolved, then the individual components are all mixed together, and it would still look like the same color, just dissolved now in water. Now let's add something absorbent, like our coffee filter papers. As soon as the paper is in contact with the solution, it's going to absorb much of it. The solution is attracted to that paper, and as the water crawls up, the ink goes with it. But the lower density molecules, they travel up faster. The heavier ones, they stay near the bottom. And so this is chromatography. We get a visual separation of the different color components. As you can see, the heavier, more dense purple molecules stayed near the bottom. Whereas the lightest ones, the green ones, are up near the top. So really, while we do this chromatography, keep in mind, one of the reasons why this works is because atoms and molecules exist. This is just further evidence of the atomic hypothesis. Time to experiment. Here's my hypothesis. My three black markers, Crayola, Rosart, and Sharpie, aren't actually black. They are actually a mixture of other colors that are concentrated enough so that way they appear black. And if we analyze them using chromatography techniques, this shall be revealed to us. Got your stuff? Let's test this idea out. Lay out your coffee filter paper and get it as flat as you can. And then cut it into rectangular strips. Now I've got three right on top of each other. That way I get the same size and shape of strips. That way my experiment is standardized for these three tests. Lay them out and then draw a line across your strips of paper. Do it near the bottom, but not at the bottom. Then using a pencil, I'm going to label each one so that way the pencil lead doesn't smear. With your papers labeled and ready, tape them onto your sticks. And then you're going to place your stick into first an empty cup. This way you can see what level of water you're going to need. It needs to touch the paper, but not be a level of water that's up to the line. You can easily then eyeball it and measure out the amount of water that you need in a different cup. And then just take your strip of paper and transfer it from the empty cup into the full cup. Now here's our Crayola. As soon as we put the paper in contact with the water, the water is attracted to that paper. As the water goes up, it now starts to dissolve the ink, and it's going to take the ink up with it. 
It's absorbed up into it through something called capillary action, but it's also being pulled down with gravity. So it's kind of like a tug of war between these two forces. As the water and ink move up, the less dense molecules go up near the top. The more dense, heavier molecules they stay near the bottom. And already with the Crayola, we're starting to see some coloring. It looks like there's a pretty dense red molecule down near the bottom. Here's our rose art, and when we speed up the film, we can see also we're getting a bit of a separation. This one too has some red down there near the bottom, and what looks to be blue up near the top. I would say so far the hypothesis is doing pretty well. Now let's take a look at the Sharpie. We place the Sharpie strip of paper in contact with the water, and at first the Sharpie markers seem to block the water from going up. After a good amount of time, it doesn't look like the water is doing anything to that Sharpie ink. Once you feel enough time has passed, take your chromatography out and maybe set it in a different empty cup. Let it sit there and dry. So how's my hypothesis doing? The Crayola and the Rose Art definitely show some evidence of other colors, non-black colors, being present there. It looks like it's just a mixture of red and blue, and that they're concentrated enough so they appear black. But that stubborn Sharpie didn't do anything. So right now, we would say that the data is inconclusive. Sure, the first two supported my hypothesis, but my hypothesis included this third one, and I don't have any evidence for or against it. But I'm not giving up yet. Sharpie is a permanent marker. Those other two are advertised as being washable. That means they're water soluble. Of course that would work in water. Sharpie doesn't. Let's try out a different solvent and see if we get some results. I know, isopropyl alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol because that has the least amount of water in it. And since we already know that water doesn't work, the less water the better. And I've also labeled my strip of paper accordingly. Now as we place it into contact with the rubbing alcohol, as soon as the rubbing alcohol leaches up into the black Sharpie marker, I'm already seeing an effect much different than with just the pure water. It's definitely spreading out. And we can see it looks like the ink is actually kind of a violet color. Well, that does it. The data's in. And it looks like with my hypothesis, it's actually been disproven. Not all of it, but go back to the wording. I said that the three black markers would be a mixture of other colors, and I said that they were concentrated enough to appear black. Turns out the Sharpie is actually a really, really deep violet, but it does seem to be only one color, not a mixture. So based upon how I worded my hypothesis, it was not correct. It was not able to be supported by this evidence. While not all of it needs to be thrown out, that one part about how they would all be mixtures of different colors, that part was wrong. Give me a minute to emotionally deal with this. I'm fine. That doesn't really bum me out that much. It's part of science. Look, if you really do enjoy science, if you want to be a part of science, you're going to have to be able to deal with being wrong and being wrong often. It's part of the game. In science, it's not so much important if you're right or if you're wrong. What's important is that you still learn as you go through the experiment. You find out more. You walk away knowing more than what you started with. That's what's important. By being wrong, look at how much we learned. We learned that Crayola and Rose Art both do have black ink that is made up of a mixture of red and blue. We know that Sharpie's black ink is actually just a deep violet. We also learned that Sharpie's marker is not water soluble, but that it is soluble in rubbing alcohol. We didn't really know any of that before. Now while I'm at it, there's a lot of other colors you can try out. I kind of left them alone in this video and didn't go too far with that because I want you to explore it, see what you can discover. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but if you try a bunch of different brands and a bunch of different colors, there are surprises waiting for you. Believe me, I've tried this, and I was surprised by a few different colors and what they turned out to be. Go explore. If you get some surprising results, we really want to see them. Upload photos of your results to Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag IndieLab so we can find out what you did. Alright, now let's have some of that fun I was talking about. Time to get creative. It's no secret. I love butterflies. You know, when I was a little kid and I went through that bug phase, which I never really grew out of, I gotta admit, although I found all these different types of insects really interesting, I kind of didn't get into the butterflies too much. I thought they were kind of a girly thing. But now as an adult, the more I learn about butterflies, wow, they are such an amazing animal. Here's just one example. You have three types of cones in your eyeballs. They can detect red, green, and blue. Those are your photoreceptors. They allow you to see different colors. 
With just those three cones, your eyeballs are able to see the countless different colors that are available to your vision. Butterflies have a lot more than three. The blue bottle butterfly, native to Australia and Japan, have 15 different photoreceptors. Think of all the colors you can see with just three photoreceptors. Can you even imagine what kind of colors that butterfly is able to see? What would a chromatography look like to that insect? What do rainbows look like? I can't help from thinking about butterflies after having done such a colorful lab. So let's actually use chromatography to make some pretty awesome butterfly decorations. Get some more of your coffee filters and choose a variety of markers and get creative. Do some different radial designs. Then just with a little bit of water, take your coffee filter paper once it's designed and fold it up into quarters or eighths and then stick it in tip first just so that way the water is just touching the tip and starts to crawl up the coffee filter. You only want just the tip touching it so that way the water can seep all the way up and get some chromatography going. Let it go for about 10 minutes until all of the water and ink is up near the top. Then pull them out and be careful and lay them out flat. Place them somewhere where they can dry. After they've dried, select one of your creative pipe cleaners, something colorful that goes with your design, and take your coffee filter and fold it up into kind of like a bow tie fashion. Once you've got your bow tie, take your pipe cleaner and about halfway through, twist it around the bow tie so that way it holds it in place. Kind of spread out the wings a little bit and then do that one more time, just so that way it's nice and secure. Once you've got it folded over twice, then take your two antenna and you're going to twist those together so that way it stays that way. Give it a good two or three twists. Now you have your butterfly. If you want to make it a little bit more accurate, since butterflies actually have four wings, take your scissors and give it a cut on each side, but not all the way to the pipe cleaners. You don't want this thing to fall apart. And if you want even more accuracy, butterflies have clubbed antenna. So go ahead and give a little club twist at the end of them. Now you have a chromatographical lepidopteran decoration. Oh yeah! Well there you go! Now because of chromatography you got yourself a nice scientific decoration. See? Art and science, they go hand in hand. And while sure, anybody could do this and make some nice butterflies, you gotta admit, isn't it more enjoyable to actually understand the science behind it? Hey, if you enjoyed this lab, please give it the thumbs up, it does help out. And subscribe to the channel so you can catch more indie labs as they come. We've got lots of creative ideas in store for you and a lot of science to learn along the way. And hey, I'll ask again, do you have a topic that you'd like to see at Indie Labs Explore? I can't guarantee anything, but we will try to fulfill requests, as you can see here. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.